Hello and welcome to another video by Geek Together. Today we'll be picking up or continuing from the part one of our CrowdSec Nginx proxy manager setup. And for this part two, I'll be showing you guys how to set up a CrowdSec multi-server installation. So our example here, we have our Nginx proxy manager, which is running our open registry bouncer and is going to be our main firewall bouncer for CrowdSec in our environment. Our Nginx proxy manager is a reverse proxy for three of our web servers, which is Guacamole, Nextcloud, and WordPress. And these web servers are only running CrowdSec as an agent or in agent mode which means they only pass the logs and detect malicious attempts but they are not performing any blocking and then we have a local api server which is the central local api server that hosts the database of the malicious block list and it stores the data that is received from all our crowdsec agents in our environment it also manages our CrowdSec bouncers that we have in the environment. So every time a CrowdSec agent from our web server detects a malicious attempt, it is going to notify the local API server to store that information in its database. And that information is shared between all the bouncers that we have in our CrowdSec multi-server setup for decision making. So if we have multiple bouncers, for example, Nginx proxy manager and maybe a Windows firewall or um, an NF tables or IP tables bouncer, every time a malicious IP is detected and sent to the local API server, that local API server is going to notify all the bouncers to block that IP address. So now that you have a basic understanding of how the CrowdSec multi-server installation works, we're going to go ahead and set this up in our lab. So before we begin our setup, you want to decide where you want to host your local API server or your LAP server. I advise that you create a separate VM and install Ubuntu and use Use that as your local API server. But for the case of this tutorial, it is also okay if you use your Nginx proxy manager as your local API server. So we're going to head back to the command line and we're going to go to our docker-compose.yml file. So we're going to use nano and we'll open up that file. Notice in this file, I have completely removed the CrowdSec configuration we had for the part one of this video. So you want to also remove that CrowdSec configuration and you want to also disable port 8080 for your Nginx proxy manager. So you want to remove the path that we had for port 8080. So once you have all that, you also want to remove the CrowdSec directory that was also created as part of our part one install. The reason why we set up CrowdSec was so we should test it and make sure that our installation actually worked. So we're going to remove that file. And now we're going to run the docker compose op command to rebuild our Nginx proxy manager. So you're going to use the command docker dash compose op dash d dash dash remove offense because we want to remove the crowdsec installation that we don't need anymore so once you run that it is going to go ahead and remove the offhand container which is crowdsec and it will recreate our nginx proxy manager so if you do docker ps you can see now that we have just the nginx proxy manager so once that's complete since we're setting up our LAPI or local API server on our Nginx proxy manager virtual machine, I'm going to go ahead and install CrowdSec on the virtual machine without using Docker. So we're going to add the CrowdSec repo. I'm going to have the link added in the description section below. So you just want to copy that and paste it in your command line. And then we're going to run the command sudo apt install crowdsec and once you do that we're going to have crowdsec now installed on our virtual machine without using docker that's very important so we have our nginx proxy manager running in docker and now we're installing crowdsec without using docker 
So once the installation of CloudStack is complete, the next thing we're going to do is install a database. In this case, we're going to be using Postgres. So we'll run the command sudo apt install Postgres. And once the installation is complete, we're going to change our login as the Postgres user to create the database. So I changed my user here. As you can see now, we are now Postgres. So we're going to run the next command psql and now we'll start by creating our crowdsec database so we'll run the command create database crowdsec and you should get a response that says create database that means the database was successfully created and then we're going to run the next command to create a user called crowdsec and set a password so we'll use the command create user crowdsec with password in my case, I'm using my secure password, but you should change this to a password that's more secure and better for you to use. And once that's done, we're going to grant all privileges to the database CrowdSec to the user CrowdSec by running the command grant all privileges on database CrowdSec to CrowdSec. So once that's complete, you want to press Ctrl D and exit and then exit as the Postgres user. And now the next thing we're gonna do here is edit our crowdsec config.yaml file so it knows to use our Postgres database instead of SQLite. So we're gonna use the command nano and you wanna come down to where you have the DB config and we want to remove everything from DB path up to log level. And once you have that removed, I'm going to paste my configuration. So in the case you wanna change log level to info, you wanna set database type to Postgres and the user CrowdSec password, you wanna set your password that we created for the CrowdSec user. And you wanna enter the DB name, which is CrowdSec and the host is 127.0.0.1. And then the port here is 5432. So once you have that set up, we're gonna save. And then there's one more command we have to run, or two more commands we have to run to make sure that our CrowdSec is now using our Postgres database. The first command you wanna run is cs sudo cscli machines add dash a. If you run that, you shouldn't get any errors. If you get any errors, it means you're doing something incorrectly. So you should get the two responses like we have here. And then once that's complete, we want to restart CrowdSec. So once you restart CrowdSec, you shouldn't get any errors either. So once that's complete, the next thing we need to do is set up our local API server to accept connections from other machines or other CrowdSec agents. In order for us to do this, we need to set up or make some changes to our config.yaml file. So we're gonna head back into that file and you wanna come to where it says listing URI. You wanna change that to the IP address of your local API server. So in my case, my IP address of this server is 172.16.25.160. Okay. And then we're gonna save that. And the next changes we wanna make is on our local API credentials.yml file. So you're gonna run the command nano followed by the path of this file, which is in Etsy, crowdsec slash local API credentials.yaml. And you also want to replace this with the IP address of your local API server. So once you have that changed, we're gonna save that file. And once again, we're going to go ahead and restart CrowdSec. And like I said before, every time you restart CrowdSec, you shouldn't get any errors. If you get any errors, it means you're doing something incorrectly. So now we have completely, or we are completely done setting up our local API server. So the next thing we need to do now is create a bouncer API key for our Nginx proxy manager. And then we're gonna test it again and make sure that it works. So we're gonna run the command CSCLI bouncers add, and then we'll give it a name. So we'll call it NPM, which stands for Nginx proxy manager. 
and now we are presented with our API key so we'll copy that and then we'll go back to our directory where we have our data files for our nginx proxy manager docker instance so in my case I had to cd into dash npm and then now data and then I'll cd into the nginx proxy manager directory and then go into crowdsec and now we want to open the crowdsec open registry bouncer.com file that we added the api key in our previous video so once we have that file open there's two things we need to change in here first we need to change the api key which i'm going to paste our new api key and then we need to change the ip address of our api url so here you want to include the ip address of your crowdsec local api server which we just created in my case i did that on the same machine or virtual machine as my nginx proxy manager if you were using a separate machine or vm like i recommended before you want to enter its ip address in here so once you do that i'm going to save that and then what i'm going to do now is restart docker for the changes to take place so we're going to use the command systemctl restart docker and once you restart docker if you don't get any errors the next thing we're going to do is test to make sure that our new configuration is actually working so we're going to run the command cscli decisions and then we're going to add our ip address to the block list and our ip address was successfully added to the block list so we're going to head back over to the browser open up nginx proxy manager and try to refresh the page and as you can see we received a block page which means everything is working so at this point we've completed the installation of our crowdsec local api server and we've configured our first bouncer which is the nginx proxy manager so the next thing we're going to do is go set up one of our web servers which is apache guacamole in this case we're going to be installing crowdsec and set it up to run as an agent only and then we're going to run a test attack on that server and see how crowdsec responds so before we proceed i'm going to head back to the command line and the first thing i'm going to do here is remove my ip address from the block list so we're going to use the command cscli decisions delete dash i followed by the ip address so once we have that removed we can now access our nginx proxy managers um, home screen again so at this point i'm going to head over to our apache guacamole server so now what we're going to do is install crowdsec on our apache guacamole server so we're going to add the repo again and then we'll run the command to install crowdsec so once the installation is complete we're going to clear our screen and then we're going to register our apache guacamole server crowdsec agent to our crowdsec local api server in order for us to do this we're going to run the command sudo cscli lapi register u followed by http the ip address of our local api server and the port number once you do that you get a message that says we've successfully registered our local api so we're going to run the command to reload crowdsec and the next command we're going to have to run is completely disable the local api on our apache guacamole server for us to do this we're going to have to make changes to the systemd service file so we're going to make a backup of the file in the first place so you want to run the following command and once you do that now we're going to edit the file we just copied and then you want to come to where it has the exec stat and we want to add no api or the no api option so once you have that added you're going to save that file and we're going to reload systemd followed by restarting crowdsec so once that's done if we head back over to our crowdsec local api server and we run the command sudo cscli machines 
list you should see here that our apache guacamole machine needs to be validated for it to be part of our local api server so in order for us to validate this machine because as of right now the status is not validated we're going to run the sudo cscli machines command followed by validate and the name of the machine so once you have that done the machine was validated successfully we're going to list machine again and now you can see the machine was added successfully so now that we validated our apache guacamole server to communicate with our local api server so to test it and make sure it works we're going to head back over to our apache guacamole machine and we're going to do the cscli decisions command to add my ip address to the block list so once we do that if we head back over to the local api server and we run the cscli decisions list command we see that the ip address was successfully added to the block list and the ban or the ip address was added from our apache guacamole machine as you can see the machine name matches the machine name we have here so now everything is working correctly we can go ahead and remove our machine from that band so we'll head back into our apache guacamole machine and we are going to delete my ip address so once that's done the next thing we're going to do is install apache 2 and apache guacamole collections for crowdsec on our apache guacamole server the reason why we're installing the apache 2 collection is because i'm currently using apache 2 to enable https for my apache guacamole so to do that we need to head over to the crowdsec hub and then we're going to search for apache guacamole so right here at the top we have apache guacamole and apache 2 collection i'm going to start by installing apache 2 so i'm just going to copy this head back to the terminal and i will install that so once that's done i'm going to go back and i will use apache guacamole copy the command and i will install the apache guacamole collections as well so i'm going to reload crowdsec and once that's done we want to head over to the etsy slash crowdsec directory to make sure that we set up our acquisition file to be able to read our apache 2 logs and our guacamole logs to monitor for malicious logon attempts or malicious traffic in the case of apache 2 so i'm going to cd to etsy crowdsec and you want to use nano to open the acquis.yml so once you open up this file if we head back over to the hub let's say we go over to apache 2 you can see here that we have a configuration that we need to set up for our acquisition file to be able to read our apache 2 log so i'm going to copy this now paste this into this file once you have that pasted if your apache 2 logs are in a different directory you want to make sure um, you replace the directory to point to where you have your apache 2 log but my logs in this case are located in the var log apache 2 log directory so i'm going to go ahead and remove for httpd because i'm running ubuntu so they're stored in apache 2 folder so once that's done i will save the file and once you have the file saved you want to restart crowdsec so we'll run the command system ctl restart crowdsec and now that that's complete we're going to head over to a kali linux machine and try to conduct some attacks on our apache guacamole server once you've restarted crowdsec and you don't get any errors you want to head over to your nginx proxy manager and at this point you want to make sure you've set up your host so that they can be accessed externally so in my case i have two web servers i have uh, geektogether.com and I have remote.geektogether.com exposed to the internet using Nginx Proxy Manager. So once you have all that set up and you've made sure that you've port forwarded port 443 to um, your Nginx Proxy Manager on your router, the next thing we're going to do is head over to a Kali Linux machine 
and we're going to test and make sure that our crowdsec is actually working so we're going to open a new browser and in this new browser i'm going to open up our apache guacamole server now you can see we can externally access our apache guacamole server and we can also access gigtogether.com and if you see i have a vpn running because i don't want crowdsec to block my internal or my external ip address so we're going to head back over to the apache guacamole server and we're going to enter a username and a password incorrectly multiple times so if we keep doing that as you can see we get we get an error message if we refresh the page we see that we are blocked and if we head back over to our other web server here and refresh the page we are also blocked from accessing this page as well so since we tested that and it worked the next thing we can do is head back over to um, our vpn client here and we're going to change our ip address to be a different ip address so if i change my ip address and i head back over to apache guacamole and refresh the page you can see we can access our apache guacamole server again and if we try one more time to enter a username and password incorrectly multiple times again, you can see that we still get blocked. So if we refresh the page, we still get the access forbidden blog page. Your blog page may look a little bit different from mine. I have mine customized. That's why it looks like this. So at this point, if we head back over to the command line and we check our decisions list, you can see that our three brute force attempts that we conducted were um, found and blocked based on the reason of the Apache 2 uh, collection we installed, which includes the HTTP generic 403 brute force um, sensor so if you do not have apache 2 set with your apache guacamole and you're just running tomcat what you might want to do as part of this is go back to the hub and we want to head over to the apache guacamole configuration and you want to follow the configuration instructions here to set up your apache guacamole to log or to send its logs to a log file so that you can add that to your crowdsec acquisition file that's probably going to be a separate video. I just wanted us to test and make sure that our multi-server setup for CrowdSec works. So if you followed until now in the video, you've noticed that we've only configured one of our web servers. Because I don't want to make this video too long, you're just going to have to follow the same instructions I did to install the agent on Apache Guacamole and you can do the same for Nextcloud and WordPress servers. So if we go back to the um, CrowdSec hub here, if you come into collections, you can search for Nextcloud and you'll find a Nextcloud collection as well. They also have a collection for WordPress. If you're running another application such as Othelia, you can check in the CrowdSec hub to see if they already have a collection for it or you can create your own collection if you really wanted to. So this brings us to the end of this video. I hope this video helped you configure your crowdsec multi-server environment to work with your nginx proxy manager please if you enjoyed the video do not forget to like the video and also subscribe to the channel